American Ace by Paul J. Loretta. Not so many years ago, a bloody conflict was waged in Europe, a conflict in which 50 million humans perished. When this carnage ceased and the flower of the world's manhood was crushed, the world had learned its lesson. All but one person walked, no more wars. This person was Queen Ursula of Castile Dor. Her dreams of an empire shattered and her colonies lost. She was banished to a lonely island in the Atlantic. Queen Ursula, one of the most beautiful women of all times, but beneath this mask of beauty beats a heart as cold and hard as steel. Through these long years she has remained in exile, growing older, more vicious, but her captivating beauty never fading. Periodically keeping secret communications with faithful followers in Castile Dor. Today her secret friends have become the most powerful men in Castile Dor. They have amassed a fighting force second to none. Now the time is ripe. Queen Ursula is rescued from the Isle, taken to Europe, smuggled into Castile Dor, then into a waiting car and a wild retaking ride to the capital. At last her plans of revenge to the countries that caused her downfall about the wall. Ah, revenge, Joseph, it will be sweet and the first country to taste my breath is at a trainer. I'll crush the dogs, I'll wipe them off the earth. Ah, Joseph, it's almost 20 years now that Tain Nia took away my richest colonies, but it'll be joy to take them back. True, your majesty, no nation can cope with us. We have every modern scientific method of warfare, but we have no excuse to declare war. We will establish an excuse, Castile Dor has a minister in Atenia at present who knows nothing of our plans. Yes, your highness. Then engage the services of a professional killer and have him assassinated there. Ah, I see the light. We will make it look like an Atenian citizen shot him. Then we will demand compensation for the brutal murder of our beloved countrymen. If they fail to do so, we shoot the works, eh? You grasp things quickly, my dear Joseph. Go now and remember the utmost secrecy about my presence in Castile Dor. And that's that, so deliberately, so cold bloodedly, this nefarious woman has ordered the murder of an innocent man to reach her own base ends. A car is coming down via Cipri in Atainia. In it sits an elderly gentleman, the minister of Castile Dor. Suddenly a man dressed in the uniform of an Italian soldier leaps from behind a tree and fires a shot that is to rock the diplomatic world through the minister's heart. Before the witnesses stunned by this sudden tragedy can collect their wits, the assassin jumps into a waiting car and is whisked away. Gosh knows where. What happened? The Khan. He shot the Khan. Who shot him? One of our own soldiers called the police someone. In less time than it takes to tell it. In less time than it takes to tell it, indignant officials of Castile Dor arrive in Atania and demand an exorbitant compensation for the minister's death. 24 hours will give you then, will blow you off the map. The assassin's shot is now reverberating around the world and people talk fearfully of a second world war as Castile Dor masses her troops on the Atainian border. At last zero hour, the 24 hours are up, Atainia has failed to fulfill the demands of Castile Dor. But at least everyone awaits the start of war. Then startling news comes crackling over the air. Queen Ursula is reported to have come out of Exile to avenge the death of the minister. With a fiery speech, she has swayed the populace, populace of Castile and won its anonymous acclaim. Atrinia must atone for her dastardly deed, avenge this slight to our country. I down with Atania, onto Atania, the war is on. And the Atanian monarch, seeing his throne tottering, bows his head in sadness.
At this moment, a plane appears over the old curves of Athenia. The pilot of this plane is Mr. Perry Wade, young American mining engineer flying to Athenia on business unaware that the war is in progress. Flying steadily on, Perry has his plane toward the capital, little dreaming that he will soon be caught in the meshes of one of the most bloodiest international entanglements and that he is destined to play a major role in the coming events. Arriving at the capital of Athenia, Perry Wade finds the city in a turmoil, trucks and artillery headed for the front, and a seething mass of uh, humanity hurrying to and fro soldiers, peasants, children, and weeping old women, and above this confusion always is heard talk of war, war, war. Hmm. It's a fine time I picked to drop in here. Taking a side street to avoid the crowds, Perry finds himself surrounded by Rigid, abject little gamings begging for pennies. Hui, yeah, yelping with glee, the game means die for the money. Simultaneously, there is the monotonous drone of many planes. The shrill scream of a siren and cries of dismay fill the streets. Then a soldier appears. Air raid, air raid, everybody under cover. Perry looks up directly overhead. Giant sleek bombers of Castile door are attacking. His face grows ashen. Striking from the skies come three messengers of death, hurtling toward the very spot where the gamers are still scrambling for the pennies. Hey, you kids, get out of the way! Run! But the warning comes too late, there is a blinding flash, a deafening explosion, agonized screams rend the air, and the tiny mangled bodies are hurled forty feet in the air. The carnage that is soon to set the world afire is on. Boom! Boom, boom, bang, a triple explosion, and the grandeur that was crumbles in a cloud of dust. Valiantly, the Tyrrhenians. Athenians try to save their fair city from utter destruction. But they haven't a chance. Their inadequate equipage is no match for these destructive super bombers of Castile Dor. Then an added terror fire breaks out, and in the glare of the burning buildings, Perry Way knocked unconscious when the first bombs fell, now gets to his feet feeling groggy. With my head. Damn it, check the mic. I know. Such a more is that.